Hey, kia ora. Helen Browns here coming to you live from Mesa in Arizona. Hope you're all having a super fantastic, sparkling, magic Monday. It has been a very, very magical day here. Um, we've had an awesome, just an incredible day. Um, there is just, it's just been, oh, mm, I just can't describe today. It has been so amazing. It was a year ago today that um, I got Zephy, that Zephy and I found each other and we adopted and uh, we adopted each other. <laughs> Got to bring home this, this, this scared, traumatized, um, shy puppy who was only eight and a half months old. She had been rescued three and a half months prior, been in four foster homes since being rescued from an abused home. And um, in, in the last year, I've had the privilege of watching her blossom into the incredible dog that she is today. She is a fantastic traveling companion. Um, she keeps me highly, highly entertained. If you want to see some of her antics, just go check out my Facebook page um, where I put a little thing together of some photographs along with some videos. There's even a really cool video in there of her trying to engage a donkey. <laughs> so she could not understand why this donkey would not respond to her play mode. She just thought it was a larger dog. You know, it had four legs like her. It just wouldn't play with her. <laughs> she was a little puzzled on that one but I'm um, looking back at the through some of those photographs is just really cool like the time that we were where were we we were somewhere in Florida can't think of the name of the place and um, we met um, Odin at the dog park and her and um, and Zephy and Odin just ran themselves ragged around that place it was a huge dog park probably about an acre or just on an acre um, it was massive, and so um, Odin's owner and I stood there, and we just chatted away, both females traveling solo, both with dogs, so um, swapping lots of tales and stories and all that while keeping an eye on the dogs, but the dogs had a blast, and then when playtime was up, I think we stood there for like an hour and talked, and when playtime was up, we um, put the dogs on the leash and started walking back, and we ended up going down the same road, and we came to, and she's in an airstream, and... Um, her airstream was about four four spaces before ours, but on the opposite side of the road. So she was on the left side of the road, we were on the right side of the road, and four spaces apart. And uh, Zephy wanted to go in with them when she walked towards it with Odin. And I said, no, Zephy, we can't go in there. And so she kept, like, looking back over her shoulder as we were walking back towards our thing, like, looking back as Odin coming out and all that. We get to the RV, and normally when we get inside, she um, lets me take off her lead, her, um, her harness and her leash and then she'll run around and then go and have a drink of water nope she didn't even let me take her harness off she just jumps straight up onto the couch puts her front paws up on top of the couch on the back of the couch and she's looking out the window directly at the airstream just whining like crazy um i eventually had to close the blind <laughs> so she couldn't look out there anymore um but finally got her harness and leash off her and then later that evening when I was walking back down to the dog park of course we walked past their place and she just like veers off to the like to the airstream and starts whining I'm like no no we're going to the dog park coming this way and they came down a few minutes later and so the dogs got to run around together again so it was um it was quite a fun fun time with that but the fact that you know we dropped her off dropped Odin and her owner off at the at her, and his owner off at the at their airstream carried on to ours and then Zephy knew where to look um it started showing me just how intelligent, how much intelligence she had in there. But um, she has blossomed so much. She's the complete 180 of what she was when I picked her up a year ago. Um, we have had many, many adventures. You know, almost 6,500 miles we've traveled together um, from one coast to the other and back again. You know, we went, um, see, February we left uh, California. We went all the way to Florida. We got stuck in Florida for a while and then we went up through Georgia and Tennessee and where else did we go? Um, there was Kentucky and I'm probably going to get these states out of order. Um, I can't remember what states we went through. But we went through Kentucky and Arkansas and we got to meet tons of people along the way. Um, and we were in, where else were we? Were? I know we were in Colorado at one point for a very long time. <laughs> New Mexico, Arizona, um, we just had such a blast traveling and she's kept me sane through this whole um, COVID situation and everything else. So it's been awesome. Um, 
And then the other thing that happened today, which is really, really cool, is I've actually had two people contact me today after the from the event that I was at this weekend. So I was at Networking Riches this weekend. Um, I ended up like I normally do with a list of things to do. And sometimes I will get, I will work, start working, I will work on the list and get some things crossed off and then some things fall to the wayside. This time I am in action. I am in action. I had stuff written on my list. Um, and I've already got several things in process. And one of the biggest things that I got in process today was I actually enrolled in a genealogy certification class today, um, which is um, one of the classes that I need. Well, not one of the classes. It's part of the training that I need to take um, as a step towards my board certification for, as a genealogist. So, um, or to become a board certified genealogist. Sorry, get my words mixed up here. Um, so super excited to get that done. They say it will take um, anywhere from four to twelve weeks to get the to complete the online class. Um, and looking at it, it's going to be it's going to be so much fun. I mean, they've got um, systems and processes in there um, for how to actually start a genealogy business, and I've got some systems and processes in place already. But one of the things I realized over the weekend was that there are some holes in there. There's some gaps where things can could easily fall through. So I need to go through and and look at my processes and make those tweaks and changes, plug up those those holes that I that I um, that I see. And um, but the cool part about the um, the textbook that we get is it has system and processes in there. So it's sort of like, oh my gosh, I already have half of these written out. I just need to follow what they've got in the book here and I'm golden. And they've got all the forms there in the book that you can print off as you need them and um, so I don't have to go reinventing any forms or anything. So um, because right now I just take down information in a notebook. I dedicate one um, college rule notebook per, fam per um, family tree that I'm researching. So I can put all my notes in there. I have um, group sheets printed off that I can go and fill in as needed. I've got research sheets printed off that I can fill in as needed. But this course covers everything from start to, fin you know, start to finish of setting up a business. Um, and um, part of the course involves the fact that you become part of the Association of Professional Genealogists, which I am already a member of, but on a yearly basis. The end of the certification will give me lifetime access to that. So I'm sort of like, yes, that's awesome. So, um, and they had it ridiculous prices on it. Ridiculous, they had Black Friday special on, and the price was ridiculous. It was, um, it was like 90% off, and I was sort of like, um, yeah, I think I'll take advantage of that because today was the last day for registration. I thought, I think I will take advantage of that. So, um, got that. That's another major, a major thing that I need to do, finish this year, do this year. So that's another thing off my list. So I am like in action, having a blast. Um, so today's been very full on. Um, I didn't have any appointments on my calendar, which meant I could just, apart from I had a training, I have a training session at nine o'clock every morning. And then I had a, um, a meeting at 11 o'clock, apart from those two things, and my training at 6 o'clock, um, yeah, 6 o'clock, um, I have nothing, I had nothing else on my calendar. So it's been a full-on day of um, putting things in place to get the, the list, uh, my in-action list, get that completed. So I've been blocking stuff on my calendar, I've been researching links that I need to go to to get that, some of those tasks done. So um, I can't just turn and go, oh yeah, that's on my list. So, uh, but I still gotta, I gotta go do this, gotta do that. So all the prep work has now been done for my action list. Um, any sites I need to go to are all listed next to each action item. So the prep work is now done. All I gotta do is go complete. So um, it's been a very magical day in a lot of ways. And I had a couple of people from the weekend who have reached out to me about my genealogy program. Um, about my genealogy um, business, so um, there's introductions being made, there's appointments being set up, um, and then I've got other people who have been connecting with me today from the event who want to sit down and find out more about what I do, so there's a lot of stuff that's going to be happening this week, and I'm super, super excited because I finally feel that the, um, the last 13 years, that all the struggles that I've been through are finally starting to come to fruition. Um, with the with the rewards, I mean, where there's been a lot of blessings and rewards along the way, I cannot deny that. Um, I've had an incredible group of people behind me, um, lifting me up, inspiring me, helping me help pull me forward, um, and I and they all know who they are, and I just can't thank them enough. You know, 
thank you seems inadequate, but it's all I have. Um, I truly love and appreciate um, all the support we've gotten over the last 13 years, but it feels like I've finally broken through um, because, you know, when you feel like you're stuck in a tunnel, you, you know, you actually got to realize that you've been buried and you're getting fertilized for all this good stuff from people that are helping pull you forward and support you and inspire you and um, giving you the boot in the pants that you need, that sort of stuff. And then eventually you break through, you get through that struggle of pushing your way up through the earth and break through and that breakthrough has now finally, I feel like that breakthrough has now happened where I'm now that little shoot that you see just breaking through the surface of the of the dirt so um into the sunshine so um but you know what it's been a super fantastic sparkling journey and i know it's not over yet things are going to keep happening they always will um because there's new things that you need to get prepared for and new stuff you have different stuff you have to go through in order to prepare you for the next phase that's coming so this is this is the cycle of life you've got to go through these challenges because it helps prepare you for what's coming next um, so I'm excited to see what's going to happen next, but I'm living in the now. I'm getting my stuff done now. I'm getting everything lined up. Mind you, everything's kind of been lined up for a while, so it's now kind of getting in action. Um, but it's good to feel in action and feel this high on life. It's fantastic. And, um, oh yeah, remember yesterday I was telling you about, um, PetSmart and placing my order and getting told that three of the four items could not be delivered because they can't be delivered via DoorDash? Well, and only one of the products on that order could be. Well, DoorDash arrived today with the three products that they said could not be delivered by DoorDash, but they did not deliver the one they said that could be delivered by DoorDash. Go figure. <laughs> I have no clue. Maybe they got their sis. I don't know. All I know is that Zephy now has a full complement of food that's going to last her two months, and that's all I need to worry about. And she's got um, she's got some new Kong treat stuff for toys as well so we'll get those cleaned off for her and I might even pre-prepare them and put some of them in the freezer so when we're outside it gives her a little bit of a challenge um, but one of them is a hexagonal I think it is octagonal hexagonal in shape I, mean, I can't remember how many sides it's got and it's got grooves inside where you can put the, the Kong paste that comes in the little squirty can like the ready whipped cream and you put it into the little grooves and stuff and you freeze it and it's good for their teeth because um well, they're licking it and yeah, you can put you can even put um the doggy tooth some of the doggy toothpaste in some of those grooves as well um which because um the vet once told me he says if you can't get if you have difficulty brushing their teeth as long as you can get the toothpaste with the enzymes on their teeth in some way like smearing it on a toy that they then go and chew and lick and stuff that will still get the enzymes on the teeth and help keep their teeth and their teeth clean and their, and their breath fresh so Although Zephy's really, really good with getting her teeth brushed, I must admit. I just pull out her toothbrush and toothpaste and she just starts, sits, sits there, looks at me and starts licking the chops. <laughs> Tongue comes out and she's like, oh, that's, that, that stuff tastes good. So I'll have to remember to keep getting that same same flavor of toothpaste for her so that um, she doesn't look a little leery. But, um, but she still likes to go and run and hide when it's time to actually brush her teeth. Um, but then I pull her out, sit her up on like the bed or on top of the crate there and she'll sit there and let me brush her teeth for her and then she gets a little dollop of toothpaste on the toothbrush and she gets to lick it all off at the end that's her treat at the end there so but anyway um hope you have had a super fantastic sparkling magical monday today what magic stuff what magic happened in your day today um let us know in the comments below that would be totally awesome so we can celebrate your magicness today um but have a super fantastic sparkling evening we're off to go for walk um, I'm having to learn to spell because she's, starting, she's recognizing words <laughs> and she tends to get a little overexcited on some words like the W-A-L-K one, um, which is going to be so funny because I remember with Gus when he learned, when he learned what the word, and he would go crazy when we mentioned the words and so then we started spelling the words and then he figured out what the spelling meant. So then we started going like, oh, um, we're going to go for an R in the C and take the D to the P. <laughs> go for a ride in the car and take the dog to the park. <laughs> and so we just start using like the main letters. You know, we're going to take the, the D for an R um, to the to the P. And then, she, and then he started learning what all of that meant too. It's like, damn it, we can't come up with anything. So we had to keep coming up with ways to 
get the message across and this is what we were going to do without letting the dog know what we were actually doing, trying to keep the, but we tried to keep our voices in the same tone that we'd been talking in, not put any excitement in there, but he would figure it out and go stand by the door and wait. Um, Zephy just starts running up and down the RV and whining. Mm -hmm. Oh, and she's got a new one too. She now, when she's looking out the front window, if she sees the guy across the road drive up and park his car in his carport, she comes running down and stands by the door. Even if our door's closed, she just stands there and waits and looks at it. Like she's expecting him to knock on the door and give her a treat. <laughs> I looked at her when she did that this morning and I was like, it ain't happening. <laughs> but the postie did stop and give her a treat this morning. It was so funny. And... Uh, Ziffy was all over the screen, and I got up thinking that she had a package for me, she had a package for me or a mail for me or something. She said, "I don't have anything for you. I just thought I'd stop and give her a treat." And I'm like, "Well, thank you very much." So, um, but anyway, have a super fantastic, sparkling evening, and uh, we are off to go for W A L K, and we will catch you guys tomorrow for Tune Up Tuesday. Hey, Gonara. Mm -hmm.